ओम श्री साई राम प्रशांति संदेश साई पर्ल्स ऑफ विजडम वेलकम सी यू वी नो बाबा यूज टू गो इन टू ए ट्रांस मोर ऑफन इन दोज डेज एंड स्वामी गेटिंग इन टू ए ट्रांस हैपन इन द लेटर ईयर्स ऑल्सो दिस इज ए डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ भगवान गोइंग इन टू ए ट्रांस इन द अर्लियर पीरियड frequently baba used to go into a trance often this would be in the middle of a conversation there would be no predictable time or situation for this if any devotee suffered from severe ailment or pain anxiety or incurable disease any handicap whatsoever baba would apparently leave his body and go to that place where there was suffering even while coming down the stairs or while walking he would often fall down sometimes he would lean back or forward while in bhajans his body would become stiff like a statue at once men would make him lie down nobody touched his body baba himself had instructed so he would never recognize others during that period he would pull on his hair and draw it into his mouth as if it were all flower petals if there were a box of betel leaves nuts and edible lime stone for making a pan he would exhaust the betel leaves he would laugh like a madman he would talk to himself which no one could understand sometimes vibhuti would come out of his mouth in puffs he would talk in other languages his hands of face would shrink and there were indications that he was subject to intense suffering at times his face would gather brilliance if he caught anything in his grip it would be difficult to pry it open the only thing the devotees could do was just to watch him helplessly and pray silently when would he would even come out of such a trance he might report that he had been to save a devotee invariably such occurrences would be verified some days later when the devotee would come to express his gratitude to baba such trances started happening in orakonda in 1943 and continued until after his shift to puttaparthi in the late 1950s in the 1960s the frequency of the trance reduced in 1969 on shivaratri day baba went into a trance for more than half an hour after bringing out a lingam from his body this was the trance of a long time duration that was in public and so these are the situations or the narration relating to baba going into a trance now indian spirituality tends to discourage numerous debates on scholarly details relating to time and space for it is concerned with a realm which is beyond time and space sri satsai baba also disapproves of such debates this may be so to discourage the foolish human mind from straying away into such winding mazes on some occasions he apparently confuses people with his utterances with seemingly different and conflicting dates and names this may be his way of discouraging such futile pursuits in this light it is not quite so mystifying that right from the middle of the 1950s biographies have accepted 1940 as the year of declaration many important evidences were not readily accessible to researchers at the time hence the difference the year of grand declaration is officially taken as 1940 Rajus following increased those who had been his classmates 
the day before came and hesitantly stood at the door looking at their razu with a sense of longing he called them near and had them sing the bhajans that he had taught them before he materialized prasadam for them three days passed thus news of this sudden turn of events reached putavarti razu's relatives heard that razu had returned from hampi with an even larger number of adorers drawn by miraculous happenings at hampi and hospet and on returning he repudiated worldly concerns casting of books and schoolmates declaring that hearth and home could not hold him in bondage any more even more bizarre were the rumors that started floating around news flew by word of mouth from urakonda to anantapur then to dharmavaram and bukapatnam and finally heavy even distortions reached putavarti how rumors float especially when associated with the out of the ordinary people people believe what they want to believe and not the truth formulae are made patterns of behavior are structured and categorization of people and events are made on the basis of some individuals human experience however limited that might be fantasy adds a tantalizing touch to the supernatural often missed in this world of harsh reality those who returned to putaparthi from weekly markets at bukapatnam that monday freely aired rumors satyam has escaped to putaparthi satyam has become a bala yogi satyam has gone underground satyam entered a chariot which rose beyond the site where satyam stood only a handful of jasmines was seen satyam is no more that was the trend of the rumors then there was no news from satyamaraj yet the parents were perplexed when kamaraj decided to go to raukonda and investigate for himself israma decided to accompany him on the way to raukonda they met a messenger who brought a letter from satyamaraju satyam had not left raukonda satyamaraju has persuaded him to stay in raukonda the parents felt uncomfortable as people looked at them with curiosity and adoration as the mother and father of the new baba they entered the house and found their own raju seated with a heap of garlands at his side many people were in the house and satyamaraj was struggling to keep order he made way for the parents so that they could approach raju who said when he saw them oh maya has come israma broke down and lamented her plight and padmarankaraju pleaded with raju to return to putaparthi with them but raju said who belongs to whom nan ko shed the resolve of the boy he was constantly repeating it is all maya yet israma was not impressed by this philosophy her mother's heart only yearned to feed her son to seat him on her lap to brush his hair to hear the songs he loved to sing to see again his pandari bhajan dance fond remembrance of the days past made her burst into tears she had to be led away in an attempt to console and reassure her those assembled narrated to her some of the miraculous happenings of recent days but israma was unmoved when did such him eat today was all that she wanted to know did he eat at all what food does he like best now her motherly concern for her son turned into a search for a release from the tension and fear that gripped her raju was impatient to be out in the open the enclosed place filled with entangling filial passions was stifling him but when told that mother herself was in the kitchen 
preparing a meal, he quite surprisingly replied that he would eat. Those words were balm to the mother's heart. She began cooking with added zest. When the meal was ready, Razu walked to where his parents stood and sat down on a reeded mat placed on the floor with the plate before him. He looked on uninterested and his mother placed on the plate the outpouring of her love. When she finished saying, she nervously signaled that offering he accepted. With a swift movement, Razu swept all the food into one mass and rolled into three bars. Maya, Maya, he kept on repeating. Someone told the stupefied mother that Razu was bidding her to come near. She moved forward. He put one of the balls of food in her right palm and kept palm before her to receive it. As she gave it, Razu was whispering, Maya is gone, Maya has left. The same has happened for the other two balls. All the filial ties were cut. The sober atmosphere struck the elders, including Sheshama Razu. Satya was not their son anymore. He belonged to all mankind. They could not unravel his mystery. It was difficult for the parents to grasp the enormous significance of all that had happened. Could they really accept that their son was a divine being? For Ishwarama, his safety and physical well-being remained her primary concerns. The father who had lent his name and lineage to Razu was more pragmatic. His traditional training in Indian spiritual law and his fortitude in the face of adversity had helped him accept the future with passive stoicism. The now famous Razu family stood on the firm roots of Venkamarazu and yet in its branches ran the sap of strong emotions inherited from Isharama. Tomorrow held unknown and unheard of possibilities. The privileged parents, without understanding how blessed they were, that they understood one thing for sure. Love, humanity, and grace alone would help them come in terms with the changed circumstances. From then on, they were referring to their dear Satya as Swami, the revered one. But for the world, he would soon enough be known as Sri Sat Sai Baba. The evening and the night were spent in bhajans in the garden of Anjanel. The singing and praying went on into many hours continuously. Even in that cold October morning, many years later, Sheshamarasu was to narrate happenings that preceded the declaration. So, Sheshamarasu had some things to say. What had happened prior to the declaration of the avatarhood of Bhagavan Baba. So we are coming to know the biographic details of Bhagavan Baba since his childhood. There are lots to learn. Let's eagerly await for the next session. Thank you for your time.